Hello and welcome to today's Connect Online session, where we'll be talking about analyzing data across clusters using modelings. Uh, my name is Till Westman, and with me is... Idris Mutiwala. Hi, nice to meet you. And I'm the Principal Product Manager, managing the analytics uh, portfolio at Couchbase. All right, thank you, Idris. Okay, so let's get started. Um, this is a feature of the Couchbase Analytics Service. And so um, to give you a little bit of a background, we'll just talk a little bit about the, the big picture and then we'll get to the actual feature that we're talking about. So um, just very generally, I mean, there are a few things that we consider to be modern analytics challenges and the things that people want to do. Um, one of them is that, of course, they want to gain business insights and they want to find out what's happening in their business and they want to find out right now so that it's timely and, and useful for the business. Um, the other thing that we want to do, so while we want to have that timely insight, we also want to make sure that whenever we get that insight, we derive that insight, um, we don't um, interfere with other operational workloads that, that the business might be running. So we want to protect the operational workloads from the other workloads that we're creating by, by looking into that insight. Um, Another thing that's always uh, relevant here is the question of managing transformations. So often if you're analyzing data, there's some transformation step involved and um, that often proves to be challenging in the way you execute that. And um, of course, um, in everything that we want to do, we want to get more efficient. So then another goal that we have when another challenge that we have that we want to address is um, minimizing the cost and complexity of what we're doing here. All right. Um, so I said, this is an analytics feature. This is Couchbase Analytics. So let me have a quick look at, um, at Couchbase Analytics, what it is, and especially what it provides to you to kind of address the problems that we're seeing over the challenges. So the first thing about Couchbase Analytics, what does it provide? It provides real JSON analytics. So it allows you to analyze nested JSON data using a declarative query language that is a generalization of SQL, we call it NICL for non-first normal form query language. And it's a very powerful language because it allows you to deal with nested data. And um, it is still very familiar because it's basically SQL. And so developers are familiar with it and are able to use it and to do, use its power. Um, so the next uh, point is why you would want to have cut with analytics is time to insight. So as we said before, one of the challenges is to get current data. And so we really want to get quick time to insight, which just means that we can get the insight on real-time business operations as they happen now. So it's on current operational data. The next reason is that it is really high performance. So um, what you want to do is you want to run your analyses, you want to have complex ad hoc queries, they need to run fast, and you need to be able to scale up the data. And uh, so that's something we do pretty well, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later, how that works. And um, of course, the other thing that I kind of mentioned before is the workload isolation. So there really should be um, no impact of the uh, um, operational workload on of the analytical workload on the operational workload. And of course, the goal for all of that is basically three things. It's deriving insights to help you make decisions. And of course, in the end, to grow your business. All right, um, so now maybe let's uh, take a step back to kind of compare and contrast a little bit what Couchbase Analytics does uh, compared to traditional solutions. So um, this looks like a relatively traditional solution. On the top left, you have a business application that writes to an operational database on the top right. Um, and that is the, the usual model. Then what usually happens is that you get the data from your operational database. You have some ETL, extract, transform, and load process into an analytical database. Then you run an analysis. Um, and those are the analyses that you get. Um, so that has a few nice and few not so nice properties. So I mean, the nice property is you have very nice workload isolation here, right? I mean, the operational database and the analytical database, they don't have a lot to do with each other. Um, you can provide scalable high performance. If your analytical DB is um, high performant, then, then, then life is good. Um, the one thing you cannot really get is the analysis of current operational data. So the, you have the ETL between the operational and analytical data, and that takes time, and it, there are transformations there, and, and there's just often a batch step there, so that, um, that is uh, in the way of getting that. Often these, these batches are daily or something like that. So there's some real time um, passing on before you actually get to your analysis. 
And um, also in traditional analytics solution B, the, the JSON support is, or using them for JSON analytics is not completely easy. So there is a, of course there are extensions to SQL and other databases have some JSON support, but the, 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 the power of nickel and the ability to really deal natively with nested data um, is, is otherwise not available. And so there's another real strength um, or a weakness of traditional solutions and something that, that Couchbase analytics can do much better. So let's take a look at what that looks like in using Couchbase analytics. So uh, what Couchbase analytics does is instead of having this ETL between the operational data and the analytical data, um, we basically provide the data that we want to analyze in real time from the operational database to the analytical database or to the analytical data nodes. So specifically, we're using our replication protocol. So we have a replication protocol that provides high availability on the operational side. And we're using the same replication protocol to get another replica of the data onto the analytics side, which allows us to get really current data as current as your, as your replicas are for your high availability. And you can run your analysis on that data. And because it's on a separate node, you will be able to get the workload isolation that you're looking for. And it's also just from a, from a user model, it's really helpful um, because what you do is you have the same data structure, your, the same, same shape of your data um, on both sides of the, of the, of the uh, equation, which is the operation and the analytical side. So you'll be able to run your analyses on the data model that you already know, that your developers already know. So there's no kind of time to adapt to that. And the other benefit that we have here by getting this replication is also that the flexible schema that we have on the front end in the, um, on the operational side also exists uh, on the back end on the analytical side. And so basically all data, no matter what form or shape it's in, if your application has it, your analytics can run on that data. Um, the other thing that we talked about, of course, is that we want to have really high performance. And in the case of culture-based analytics, that is achieved by uh, massively partition parallel processing that we do for our query processing. So you can always have multiple nodes running your queries, running your analyses. And if you have uh, requirements that exceed what you currently can do, you can just add new nodes and, and scale the cluster up to achieve your performance goals that you have. Um, another important aspect here really is that in all of that, what we do, we are built to deal with a lot of data. So um, in every, any case, the uh, memory, the, the, the RAM of, of the nodes is not a limit. It's always possible whenever something takes more space, we'll just use the disk and flow over to the disk. And so there is no um, concern about uh, running out of memory. And um, yeah, and but. Okay, so we, we talked about this before, the workload isolation is one of our main topics, and that's still here because basically we isolate the workload between the operational data nodes and the analytical nodes. All right, I think, I hope that kind of gives you some background about Couchbase Analytics, and um, so now let's get to the main topic of the day, so remote links. So um, maybe, yeah, let's, let's just uh, look at a few um, simple steps here. So, um, what do remote links, what are remote links? Remote links are the ability to kind of have a link that exists between the operational and the analytical node. You've seen that in the previous picture, right? We said we have operational and analytical nodes and between those we have a, a link, which is a, a logical concept. And um, in uh, what we had so far, basically that link was always within the same cluster. And remote links now allow us to actually have that link to another operational cluster. So it's not the same cluster that has the operational analytical nodes, it, those can be two different clusters. And what this does for you, it, it helps you to analyze data across clusters. It um, allows you also to optimize resources and we'll see a little bit more detail um, how we're doing that. And that will basically, uh, with that optimization, we will also um, reduce the operational costs. Um, so maybe let's um, take a little uh, step back and, uh, look at what that looks like architecturally. So this is kind of a simple conception of, of what the architecture should look like. Basically, you have an operational application. The operational application talks to the uh, operational database, which is the data service here. And that then give, uh, replicates the data to the analytics service. And the analytics service is then the source for whatever you want to do with your analysis. If you want to visualize, you can use visualization tools or use it in application or something like that. So this is kind of what we just talked about before. 
And of course, I mean, here's one application. Um, then you could imagine that you have more of those applications. So here you would have a customer service application, a retail application, and a social media application. And they all kind of work in, in the same context um, that you can analyze your operational data directly. So what, what, what we're adding uh, as a new solution right now is that you don't have to be in the same cluster. So you can basically split this, the, the data cluster from the analytics cluster and um, basically continue work. So this configuration is, is, is feasible. It's probably not very useful because right now you just split one cluster into two clusters with the same property. So you just increased um, your administration. But the good thing that you can do with what um, remote links allow you to do now is that you can actually have different operational clusters talk to the same analytical cluster. And so this gives you a few opportunities to, to improve things. So one of them is that you can analyze across those clusters. So now basically you can run analyses um, between the, the retail application and, and your customer service application and your social media application and get data from all three in, for the analysis. So you still have the workload isolation between the operational database and analytical, but for your analysis, you can basically cross those databases and get the insight of, across multiple applications for a nice customer 360, for example. And so this does two things to you. One of them I just described the, that you can analyze across clusters. And the other one is that you can also potentially um, consolidate here because you might not need um, a big uh, analytical cluster every time um, for each um, application. So you basically can, can share the resource. Yeah. And of course, the other thing that you can do, you can also, if you have more resources available for your analytical cluster, you can make, make those available to all of the operational clusters. And so this is um, kind of how, how the, you can also, you can both improve the, the capacity of your cluster or just consolidate and, and reduce your TCO. So um, looking, looking at the benefits here, um, as we talked before, so we got the holistic insights across multiple uh, operational applications, and we got the real-time data sync that we had before, and we're able um, to consolidate and, and reduce costs. All right, so this is it, and now this was all slideware, and now we'll get to the demo, which will show all of this in action. Idris, please take it away. Hi. Thank you, Till, um, uh, for a great background on remote links. Uh, share my screen. Uh, all right, thank you all. Uh, so I'm gonna walk you through a demo of uh, the remote links. So we have a company here called XCOM. Uh, it is a, a couch-based customer. They're a worldwide e-commerce company. They sell office furniture, et cetera, various you know, uh, supplies, et cetera, worldwide. Uh, the current uh, configuration is they have three couch-based data nodes. Uh, and uh, they have two analytics data nodes. And essentially, so you can see, as still as described in this previous, uh, the, the architecture is uh, very simplistic. There's a little uh, shopping cart application that goes right to the web stuff, it writes into the JSON files, into our data nodes, and, and it's, it's replicating its data into analytics nodes today. Uh, uh, essentially, uh, they have a business change, and uh, due to a new customer and a consumer privacy, and various taxation laws which take place in, 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 in the world, especially in Europe. Uh, they want to move their European orders to a new couch-based cluster. So they have now separated their, 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 uh, the, the data nodes for non-US data to be tracked uh, in a separate cluster because of GDPR and various uh, consumer privacy. So, so now they have had this change. The, the challenge is you know, they would like to identify the top three selling products for each of the country. So, so they can optimize the inventory planning and your forecasting revenue goals. What that means is, hey, they were previously in a, in, a, in a cluster where they had only the, the US and all the non-US all combined in one, the rest of the world in one. But now with, with the Europe in another data node and, 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 and the US and the others, you know, they want to combine it together. And more importantly, their, their engineering team, and they really want to analyze it in the existing analogs because the engineering team wants to see how how it's actually going to perform and how it's actually going to work with getting this data from a different cluster. And then based on the outcome, decide on setting up an analytics cluster. So how do we do this? So using remote links, there are three, three simple steps. Number one, you set up a remote link. And uh, it's basically a couple of ways you can do. One is using an API or a CLI. This is an example on the right hand side using a API where you can you call in the call command, you send the information of the analytics um, uh, the, the the web service 
and the, the data wars by default, there is already a default created. Um, the name of the remote link, uh, in this case, we have created remote link non US orders, which we'll walk through in a minute. Uh, the type of the link, and, and, and this is because we have a couple of new features, which we're going to talk about in another session um, as well. In this, in, for remote link, we want the type to be, to be type couch based because we're going to be pulling it from a, a remote couch based uh, uh, KV node uh, uh, data services. And then we provide the information of the remote uh, data service host, the credentials, and we also support uh, encryption we can have none or full. Once you do that, uh, for, uh, for the, for the, uh, for the demonstration purpose, I've already recreated a, uh, a remote link beforehand. And so we'll focus on getting the next two step, which is to create then a data set on that remote link. And in third, we, we fire a nickel query for a nickel final X query and address the challenge for what XCOM is looking to help answer with this question. So, uh, I am going to go into, uh, into the uh, into demo. So this is right here, just to show you, I'm just gonna execute it. This is to that I've already set up the remote link uh, of type couch base in, in place. So next is for us to go create a data set of type, uh, I don't know, where we will have from uh, a from a remote link, which is sitting on another server. And we're gonna pull, and we're gonna call the uh, data set non US orders, and we'll execute this thing. And as you can see here, we have this, data set created. Now we're going to connect this link. One of the steps once you create a data set is to, is to connect the link on that remote link which you have created. So execute this and you'll see immediately that it's starting to get the data from their remote link which is sitting on a different cluster altogether. So once we do this, this is, uh, this is excellent. This is happening. Let's go execute the, uh, what the query would look like to get the top selling products. Uh, for uh, all the countries, including the US and, and, and Europe, okay? Uh, so let me show you what the score looks like. Uh, I don't want you to be uh, uh, too, uh, this thing blown away, like oh, this is a big query. Actually, it's a very simple query. I'm gonna break it down for you. So essentially the first part of the query is we're gonna get the data for uh, all the aggregation of all the data within the US. This is pretty easy. You get the, the country information, the product, you get the, uh, and you group, group it by, uh, for the US orders, they were already created because it's on the same cluster. Um, uh, also, uh, this is where we will get the same information, but for non-US uh, amounts. Uh, so we're gonna get same information, but for non-US orders. Then what we do is we, we use a window function and we union them, both the other uh, uh, subsets of data. By the way, we're using common table expressions. Uh, so we are separating the logical units of the, uh, the, 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 the results of the queries. And then we union them all and, and we use a window function to partition by the country because we want to show by the country and only want to show uh, the top, top ones, top three ones uh, by amount. And finally, we just combine all of them uh, with, with this top three by country with the products and the country, which is the product information and the country is all the country's information together and we're gonna show Europe and North America. And basically what you do is, well, this is happening, essentially is executing and it's federating the query between this one, US orders and non-US orders. And you can see right here that, you know, uh, the, the, the top three products for each country and the, and the amount for each of these. Uh, as you can see, we have the ones in the US, we have the ones coming from the other parts of Europe and the different uh, products, for example. You can see Ireland and you can have unbranded steels fish and an awesome concrete towels. Obviously these are all made up and mocked up. It has the same thing uh, to also demonstrate uh, we can do in um, the visualization tool called NOI. We have taken the exact same query and created a, a simple dashboard where you can plot the data by country or on the geographical map and say, hey, okay, how does Spain looking? You can double click on the information and get the information on each of these top selling products uh, as well. So very easy to uh, develop, very easy to execute in, in the nickel for analytics, as you could see, and get the power of uh, the, the remote links um, and very easy to set up as well. So going back to the presentation, uh, the key benefits uh, of overall cloud based analytics, number one, as, as Till pointed out, workload isolation, because we are now up, you're separating your operational workloads and analytical workloads 
into a separate nodes altogether, which is delivering that higher performance, which you need to, to drive your, your ad hoc query, your data discovery, your, uh, your predefined dashboards or predefined BI reports for that matter. And, but more importantly, it's running based on your JSON, uh, JSON data, JSON data. Uh, which, which is very powerful, or which was called based analytics, uh, is very uh, powerful, for, powerful for that. Um, you also saw that there was no ETL for no SQL. What, what we mean by this, for the JSON data, you did not have to do any kind of extract, transform, or load, which still talked earlier in this architecture uh, as, part of, as, as part of the traditional architecture and the, and the modern architecture where there's no need for doing any kind of transformations or, 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 tran or transformations needed. Your JSON data was what the form it was available in the, in the operational data node is available in the exact same form and for you to do your analytics. Uh, also, there is a continuous data sync. As we saw in the demo, the moment I created the, the data set, I mean, though it's on remote link, there was a continuous data sync, uh, which would take place, uh, which means anytime there is a change, uh, which takes place in the underlying uh, in, in your remote cluster, or it could be even your existing data service, it will automatically continuously data sync and make the data available in Couchbase Analytics, which which brings in the 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 availability of the current the current data as as needed because you want the data to be as current as possible, which is uh, the the timeliness aspect, and uh, and lastly but not the least, but we also have the, the the overall Couchbase Analytics is very very easy to manage. Uh, it's very easy to add a, a new node to an existing cluster, very easy to rebalance, it takes five clicks to, to add a node and, and to rebalance it. And you, you saw how easy, easy it was to use Nickel for analytics, very, very uh, SQL-like. So if we folks are familiar with SQL and a lot of the entire developer community is very, very uh, uh, close to and writing code in, in, in SQL. So uh, these are some of the key uh, code-based analytics, which is, we saw all weaved in into what remote things is bringing in. And to top it all, all this is bringing in additional uh, reduced uh, total cost of ownership, and it's also reducing your complexity and, um, and bringing you a higher performance as well. So uh, thank you very much uh, for, uh, for, the, for you all joining the session. Uh, please do attend our uh, other Connect uh, sessions. Uh, as listed here, there are, quite a, there are a lot of interesting and a lot of exciting things out there. Uh, Till and I are going to be talking about uh, how to analyze this data from S3 as well in real time. And, uh, and, and he's going to be talking along with Dimitri on big data analysis, along with some of our partners uh, who are going to be talking about uh, how do you see data and, and know it. And also Peter is going to cover some exciting things on, on the deep dive on cloud-based analytics. So thank you very much.